Welcome back. Today's video is going to be a monthly reset video. If you're not familiar with this type of video, basically what we're going to do is we're going to chat about April's goals. We're going to kind of do some reflection and then we're going to set new goals and intentions for May. And then to keep things fun, I like to end the video with like a couple of favorites. We're going to start by doing personal goals, but first I have some things I kind of want to let you know. Um, April was a really hard month for me. And it was really hard for me to admit this because um, I want to show up as a strong person who has their life together. But about mid-April, I fell into what I like to call the pit of despair, which is just kind of like a, a slump. Um, I was super unmotivated. I was sleeping a lot. Like I didn't want to get out of the bed. I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't taking care of my family. And I was kind of like neglecting my responsibilities. Thankfully, that didn't last too long, but it was a pretty good chunk of the month. So that kind of sets the tone for, you know, how well I did with my goals. Because when you're neglecting yourself, you're usually neglecting your goals. And I know for, for a fact that I did. So we're going to move into personal goals and we're going to start with my health goals. Now, I've touched on my health goals in the past briefly. I try not to go into too much detail um, just because the specific goals that I have for my um, diet and exercise are very specific to me, to my body, to my health issues. And like they're set up by my doctor, by my nutritionist, by my all these other <laughs> healthcare professionals that I'm seeing. And I don't really need um, input on like, you should be doing this and you should be eating that because um, I have professionals that are doing that. But we are going to talk about diet right now. Um, for diet, I have to stick to my macros that my doctor and my nutritionist set for me. And most of the time, I'm pretty good about that because I log everything that I eat. Like, I measure how much rice I'm putting on my plate. I measure my chicken. I measure how much creamer I'm putting in my coffee. And then I log it in my app. And so then I'm, like, constantly tracking my macros. And I'd be like, okay, this is what I had for breakfast and lunch. This is what I have left for dinner. Uh, that kind of thing and I'm able to stick to my macros better when I'm meal planning um, when I know what I'm going to be making for dinner when I know what my lunch and breakfast options are um, using green chef was a great way for me to stay on my macros uh, because I was able to pick meals that fit in with my macros um, where I ran into trouble <laughs> was when I fell into the despair right when I fell into the pit of despair like I was unmotivated. I was just not wanting to cook. Um, some days I was just too busy or like something just didn't work out. Like one day we found out like our meat was ruined. So we didn't have any meat to cook and like it was the main part of the dinner. And so we ordered in anyway. So when things didn't go to plan or when I failed to plan, then we went to eating out or ordering like Uber Eats. And then my macros get, they don't, they don't work. <laughs> I don't stick to my macros when that happens. For May, I need to stick to my macros every day. And that's something I know that I can do. Like I've been doing it before. I know what kind of foods I can eat. I know what kind of meals that I can have. And so I'm very confident that I can stick to my macros as long as I'm planning. So in addition to the goal of sticking to my macros every day for the month. I have a new goal of meal planning every Sunday. That way I have no excuse and that I know what I'm going to be having for my meals that day. My exercise goals were kind of a mixed bag. For my cardio minutes, I need to do 150 cardio minutes a week. I haven't been tracking my cardio minutes, so I don't know that I hit that every week. Um, but since I was exercising most days, I feel like I probably did. Um, now, when it comes to strength training, now that was a complete fail because um, I have no clue what I'm doing. Like, I don't know how to put together a routine. Like, I know arm curls and squats and that's about it. Um, so strength training twice a week just didn't happen. So for me, my goal is to actually track my cardio minutes. That way I can make sure I'm actually doing them. Um, for strength training, I need to find a routine that I like, that I can stick to. I'm looking for maybe like 
um, strength training for beginners on YouTube or something like that. Um, but yeah, I have to get a strength training routine that I like that is completely done for me because I, if I have to make it up myself, I just don't know what to do. So that is the health section of my personal goals. We're going to move very quickly to like my family goals. So I have two kids and so I just want to prioritize like family learning and spending time together. And in April, our goal was to work on personal responsibility because, you know, like six and eight year olds, they're not always the best at that. Um, I also updated our chore chart um, just so that they have more responsibilities that they um, that they have to do as part of the family. Um, with kids, sometimes it can take a little bit longer, especially when their expectations change. So we're going to give them another month to kind of um, get get with the program. Um, so we're going to continue the personal responsibility into May. And that is all for the family goals. Now in other videos, I would have like a separate section just for finances, but I decided to move all the money stuff together and put it in the personal section since like finance and spending is personal and it just makes sense to put all the money talk together. And the April financial goals were to stick to the budget that I have in Mint and that didn't happen. We went over in several categories, including dining out, clothing, and groceries. Um, we also had some unique expenses for the month, which I'm going to go to right now. So this month, um, we put a down payment on the sofa. Um, my husband and I had been planning on buying a new sofa since ours is super old and super worn out. Um, we were hoping to wait until we moved into a bigger space so then we could buy a bigger sofa. However, we now know that we aren't going to be moving anytime soon. So we just need to get a sofa for the space that we have. Um, my husband found a sofa that he liked, like he liked how it sat, you know, because he's the one who sits in the sofa the most. So I was like, fine, you can pick it out. Um, but I picked the fabric because I am very particular about the colors that we use in our house. And so it was a win-win. He got the comfortable couch that he wanted. And then I got the fabric that I wanted, but the deposit was $1,400. Um, I also had an unexpected medical bill for April. Well, I wouldn't say the bill was unexpected. It was just like the price was unexpected uh, for my physical therapist. I I just didn't have any idea it was going to be $246. Um, that is apparently because I hadn't met my deductible, which I, I didn't know that. Um, so I think I've met my deductible now or I'm like I'm very close to it. So my future medical expenses should be less. So March, if you remember, was an expensive month. Um, April was an expensive month. So May cannot be an expensive month. And I knew that we were going to be doing like a low spend challenge in May. I knew that a couple months ago because I knew March and April were going to be expensive. For May, I'm trying to cut the budget quite a bit. Uh, my clothing budget is going to be $0 instead of $100. Um, I told my husband we're not doing any Uber Eats. We're not doing any Grubhub. Um, we typically spend about $150 a month on that. Um, we're going to do no Starbucks either. I make most of my coffee at home, so I don't spend a ton of money at Starbucks. So it's only about $20 a month that I spend. We're doing Green Chef for three dinners a week. It costs about $350 a month for only three meals a week, which averages out to about $29 a meal. And I know with proper planning that I can get the cost per meal down lower. Um, my plan is to do, um, a pantry clean out. That's what I call them. It's basically where I go through our pantry, I go through our chest freezer and I see what's in there and we use everything from our back stock before we buy things from the grocery store. So there's a little bit of flexibility, like if I need onions or like a zucchini or broccoli or something to round out a meal that I will buy that. But we need to use like any grains, any meats, any frozen vegetables, that we have before we resort to purchasing more. My goal with the different cuts is that I want to cut our monthly spending by $500. And I think, um, I think that's a reasonable goal. So now that we've covered personal goals and the budget, we're going to move into professional goals. Now, 
I would love some feedback on whether or not you're interested in, in this section. Like if you're not interested in what my career is like as a full-time content creator, just let me know and I will cut this section out. Or if you are curious about some additional things about being a content creator, let me know and maybe I'll figure out a way to like work it into the future video. We're going to start by talking about my blog goals. My goal was to write four posts and to update four old posts. Um, I ended up doing six new posts and updating one. Um, I'm trying some new products out so that I can update old posts. So like with new skincare products or new makeup comes out, I can update recommendations. Um, but I'm still waiting on a package from the Sephora sale. Um, and I'm waiting on a package from Yes Style, which I knew was going to take forever to get here, but it's still not here. Um, that is outside of my control and I just have to wait until I get them to update those posts because um, I have to get the product, I have to test the product, and then I have to update the posts. So I, I don't know when that's going to happen. For me, my goal is to do six new blog posts. Um, if I get my packages in time, like early enough, then I will update the posts from April. If not, then I'm going to have to come back to the drawing board and kind of like figure something out. We're going to move on to Instagram. I was able to get my four posts up without any problem. Um, I used to be very into making sure like my posts are pretty, that the colors matched, like I had a theme. Um, and a lot of influencers, content creators, bloggers that you see on Instagram who have like really nice feeds, it's because they have a professional photographer who is helping them with their pictures. Now, I am a one woman show. I do have a husband, but I do not have an Instagram husband. Okay, pictures is not his thing. He hates taking pictures and he's frankly just not good at it. Um, if I want to take pictures, I have to do the setup. I have to run back and forth from the tripod. I have to do all of those things. And so there's no one telling me like, Holly, you're making a weird face or like you have like spinach in your teeth or anything like that. So what happens more times than not, because I'm not naturally a very photogenic person, is that I waste a lot of time taking pictures to have most of them not turn out. So I've just decided it's iPhone pictures and like a quick edit in Visco and that's it. And so streamlining that process just makes it to where I'm able to create content for Instagram um, much quicker and more consistently. So I'm going to continue with that for May. So four posts. Now we're going to talk about YouTube. So growing my main YouTube channel is a big goal for me uh, for 2023. Um, my blog is my number one priority always. It's my number one revenue um, source. Um, but I do want to make YouTube into a revenue stream, which means I need to do better at um, being consistent and with creating content. Um, my goal for my main channel was to do four regular videos and four shorts um, because shorts is how you grow. Um, I did four full length videos but I, I fell short on my shorts and I only did two videos. Again, I know posting consistently and posting shorts is how you grow on YouTube. So for me, my goal is to do the four regular videos and the four shorts. Like I can't add to the goal if I'm not consistently um, doing what I want to. So I need to stay consistent a few months with the four and four before I add more. So for this channel, uh, my April goal was to film one additional video. Unfortunately, the vlog that I planned in my mind just didn't materialize like I was planning on doing another weekend without the kids, but it was just super boring. And I was like, if I think this is boring, then other people are going to think this is boring. So I just scrapped it. Um, I do really want to start filming more videos for this particular channel just because I, I really enjoy um, the kind of more casual style. Um, I'm obviously going to film like any kind of travel that we do that way I can share that with you um so you can decide if you want to go to the places that we went to um but I am wanting to know like do you want to see more vlogs like do you want to see um shop with me's or hauls or what I eat in a day or 
um, cleaning. I don't know. Like if that's something that you're interested, let me know. So that being said, I'm going to keep the goal of one video in addition to this monthly reset video. So before we move into favorites, we're going to do highs and lows for the month of April. My high for April was really lovely. We had a really great Easter weekend um, with the family. Um, on Saturday, we went to my um, in-laws house and we did like the family um, celebration for Easter. And then on Easter Sunday, we um, actually took the boys to see the Super Mario movie, which they really loved. I thought it was just okay. Um, and then after the movie, we went out to eat um, at like a local restaurant and the kids were so good. They were good at the movie. They were good at the restaurant. They even tried new food and my kids are super, super picky. And so it was really nice that they, you know, ordered something on the menu and that they liked it and that they ate it because that doesn't always happen. And so that was my high for the month of April. Now, obviously my low for April was pretty bad. Like, as I mentioned, I fell into the pit of despair for a good chunk of the month, like probably a couple weeks. Um, I'm doing better now. I've like managed to like muster some motivation um, and get my act together. I am thinking about maybe doing a video where I talk about how I do that, like how I pull myself out from a slump, um, just in case you're needing help with that too. April low was definitely the pit. So we're going to wrap this video up with some favorites. I don't have a ton of favorites for the month. Um, I read a few books, but to be honest, they were kind of like duds. Um, I'm working through a book right now, which is just like, oh, I'm like, do I, do I not finish this? <laughs> I already didn't finish one book. And so I'm kind of like, I don't really want to like call it quits on another book. Um, so I'm like pushing through it. Anyway, um, as far as like television, me and my husband were watching Picard. I typically watch shows that he likes um, when we watch shows together just because I'm not really into television and he has a very specific uh, genre that he likes to watch. Um, but we did watch Picard and I won't, I'm just going to say I am not a Star Trekky person. I don't know like generation movies blah 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 like the people I know there's Spock there's Picard and there's the guy that guy okay <laughs> with the glasses and data okay that's all I know about Star Trek so you're not I'm not like a huge science fiction Star Trek person so if I say Picard is good know that that comes from like a non Star Trek person um I was kind of hoping that the end of Picard would be a little bit darker, um, but I know that Star Trek likes to keep their possibilities open. They want to keep the option open for spinoffs on alternative timelines, so I get that. Um, I really enjoyed the last season. If you're looking for something to watch, particularly maybe with your spouse, I would check out Picard. So that is all for my favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love any feedback that you have about like this monthly reset or if there's any type of video that you would be interested in seeing. And until next time, bye.